Road to Responsibility is well known for serving individuals with complex physical, emotional, and social needs. At RTR, we see the whole person, not just a collection of symptoms or challenges. More often than not, we succeed where other provider agencies fail. When Teresa came to RTR 10 years ago at the age of 18, she was overwhelmed by intellectual and developmental disabilities, compounded by psychiatric problems and unsuccessful foster care placements. Today, she is one of our great success stories. Teresa is thriving through patient teaching, consistent positive behavioral support strategies, strong communication, and integrated clinical services. Teresa earned her high school diploma. She transitioned into the adult world of work. Her family relationships are much improved, rebuilding the trust lost during her early teens. Teresa is active and outgoing, a rising star in our artist's green gallery at Library Hello. Plaza. On local ponds enjoying fish. our We Love to Fish program, and at Cobblestone Farm, where she exercises and cares for the horses and learns soil preparation, planting, and landscaping. Teresa's no longer running away from life, but rather moving forward toward goals of her own design and a life worth living. Leaving home is never easy. Alicia Hupridge was just a year old when she was adopted by her new family in the United States. Uh, my wife and I have three daughters. Uh, Alarly is our oldest daughter, she's biological. And we have two adopted daughters from Korea. One is Kara, and then two years after that, Alicia came along. Uh, Alicia was, uh, we didn't know when she came that she was handicapped. But my wife uh, realized soon after that things weren't going the way they should for natural child development. So we took her to see a neurologist and he diagnosed her with uh, uh, cerebral palsy, left hemiparesis. And that began our journey into the world of uh, special needs and special ed. Alicia lived with her family in Marshfield for over 30 years, attending a day school in Brighton, suited to her special needs. She and her two older sisters were three peas in a pod. But when the sisters' lives and careers took them elsewhere, the dynamics in the household changed. I moved out. My other sister moved out. Alicia's not going to want to stay because she sees herself as being just like us. She wants a new experience. She wants to live someplace else. We decided it was probably time to start looking around to see if there was a a program that would provide permanent housing for her. What was very important to us is that we found a program that really fit Alicia's needs. And what I was really impressed about this program is they saw Alicia as a person first. They didn't see her as a client. They weren't looking at her as a list of disabilities. They saw her for Alicia. Their search led them to Road to Responsibility. To help ease the transition to her new home, the staff worked closely with Alicia and her family to develop an Individual Lifestyle Plan, or ILP, a key document used by RTR. The Individual Lifestyle Plan was instrumental in Alicia's transition into her new home because it really looked at all the different parts of her, her life, how she communicates, how she expresses herself when she's upset, and it really eased that transition so we knew the things that were integral part of living with Alicia, those little hints and cues you only really get when you're living with somebody, that that was already there at the house so that everyone involved could see what those cues were. And that really helped her feel more comfortable because she felt, this is a part of me. They know me here. I can be myself. One of the concerns that I had, and Barbara and I both had, was that she's going to have uh, a situation down the road when we're not around 
that is, is continuous in terms of her care and, and, the, and the types of uh, uh, services that she's provided. It, it was good. In her new home, Alicia is surrounded by a family of attentive staff and housemates. John is the president of the Action Club, a Kiwanis Club program that encourages individuals to be more active and engaged in their local communities. Herman is a sensitive gentleman in his mid-50s who attends a Dayhab program and loves art and physical therapy. Cliff, age 72, was rescued from a life of isolation in a state institution. And Carol works at an RTR employment center and shares Alicia's love for music. Twice a month, the music therapy program transforms the house into a rockin' concert hall. But Alicia's first love is horseback riding at Cobblestone Farm, an activity that focuses on her abilities rather than her disabilities. You know, they're always doing something. Um, there's downtime, obviously. They can't be going every, every, every single minute of the day, but they take them out to concerts. They have uh, dinner club. We feel that house is very welcoming. We feel we can call up any time and say, hey, we'd love Alicia to come out with us. Can we come over for a visit? Because the family is very important to us. We're a very close family. We enjoy being together and we enjoy doing things. And we feel that not only has the house embraced who Alicia is, but the part of Alicia that celebrates her family as well. The increased life expectancy of RTR residents like Teresa, Alicia, and their housemates present RTR with a new challenge. We all get older, and one of the concerns that um, RTR has is what happens when their clients get older. For many of us, multi-level homes that were perfectly suited to our needs years ago are constant reminders that we're getting older. Climbing stairs is painful. Instead of picking out new tile for the bathroom, we're pricing grab bars for the bathtub. Single level living is more practical. 30 years ago, little consideration was given to the long-term physical needs of individuals whose life expectancy was much shorter than it is today. Some of our older homes and split-level residences strain the model of independence and freedom sought for our older individuals. As they grow older, they are more susceptible to knee, hip, and joint degeneration, blindness, hearing loss, and Alzheimer's. Over the next five years, 40% of our individuals will need to move to homes better suited to the challenges of increased life expectancy. There are very few single level homes with open handicap accessible floor plans to replace our residences or add to our housing stock. To meet this challenge, we must build. The floor plans for homes to accommodate individuals in separate bedrooms, as mandated by DDS and residential staff quarters, require one-acre lots. The financial commitment to meet this challenge in the region we serve is substantial. $150,000 to $200,000 per acre for the land, $400,000 to $500,000 to build. In total, the cost of building a new or replacement residence is more than half a million dollars, a formidable number. The good news? We have qualified for financing, and we are building two new single-level five-bedroom homes in Norwell. These homes will replace the residence on Assinippi Avenue and accommodate our growing numbers. State contracts will contribute significantly to the monthly mortgage. Still, we'll need assistance from private donors and other sources to fill an annual gap of $25,000. Years ago, we kicked the can down the road because we were young 
and never gave a thought to growing old. Our individuals are relying on us to meet the challenges of their aging population and to serve with distinction their complex physical, emotional, and social needs. This is our mission and our wish, to make lives better. Becomes 